I've took the marriage vow In sickness and in health I said I'll do For richer or poorer Till death us to part And you said that you'll honour and obey me too But it wasn't very long before I soon found out The one who wore the trousers was you Now after all these years at last I'm pushing you about But in sickness and in health I love you Do you mind if I use that phone? I'm using it! <laughs> You're not speaking on it. There's nobody on the other end, is there? Stupid great fat big cow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting for a phone call for my daughter, if you must know. That phone's for making calls, not receiving them. That phone is for receiving calls, too, if somebody rings you. There's no law against that, missus. <laughs> Nobody's rang you on it. My daughter's going to ring me, isn't she? Four o'clock. It's half past four now. I know the time. My call, if you'll excuse me. Hello? Hello? Rita? up. Hey? No, I am not going across the road and tell her her sister is here. What do you think? I'm a bloody messenger boy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, bloody cheek. They use this phone like it's their own. <laughs> oh, yeah, how do I? Somebody called Fred. Expects me to go charging across the road and tell somebody that their sister is ill. I'd have gone. Of course you'd have gone. That's not the point. While you're going over there and fetching her over here and talking on there to him, I could have lost my party because that phone would have been engaged, wouldn't it? There's me calling now. Hello, Rita. Oh, God, it's you again. When do you get off this bloody phone? <laughs> no, I am not going across the road. <laughs> Will you shut off? <laughs> no, that was Rita. 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 Oh, blimey, she's gone. She's gone. Can I use it now if you're finished? I ain't finished, have I? She'll ring back. She's got to ring back. Hello, Rita. Well, what time do you call this? Half hour ago, you're supposed to ring. I've been waiting. Well, can't you get his own bloody tea? <laughs> Who's shouting? I'm not shouting. If I was shouting, I've got bloody good reason to shout. Now, you listen to me. You listen, you listen to me. This is your father. This is your father speaking. <laughs> no, I'm not shouting. If I was shouting, I've got bloody good reason to shout, but I wasn't shouting. Now, shut up and listen. I've been standing in his phone box half hour, and I, hey, I shouldn't have to stand around in phone boxes, man of my age. I could catch me deaf. I could catch pneumonia and die. And then who'd look after your mother, eh? Yes, well, say you're sorry. I don't have to say I'm sorry. You, I've got nothing to be sorry about. You say you're sorry. No! You say you're... I'm not saying I'm sorry. I've got nothing to be sorry for. You say you're sorry. I am not bloody shouting. Would you... Would you dare hang up on me? Rita! Don't you... Don't you dare. I haven't finished. Are you... Rita! <laughs> 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 Start with me. Do you want to wake up yet? <laughs> do you want to stay asleep? <laughs> or do you want to wake up? <laughs> Else? Ooh. <laughs> Else? Do you want to wake up yet? No? <laughs> Do you want to stay asleep? Hey? <laughs> eh? talking to you. Well, don't talk to me then. You won that phone up on me. I ran out of money. I didn't 
didn't have any more money to put in. It was cut off. Four o'clock, you're supposed to ring me up. I was four gone when you did, then you hung up. I didn't hang up. Half hour I waited in that phone box. I was phoning from Liverpool. It is a lot of money. I didn't have any more money to put in. It was cut off. Well, well, I ain't talking to you. Oh, well, then don't talk to me, then. But before you stop talking to me, ask me in at least. Come all the way from Liverpool to see you and Mum. Not me. You ain't like come to see me. Well, I ain't come to see you. You wouldn't put yourself out for me. You're like a big baby. You are. Why do you think I'd come all the way from Liverpool if it wasn't to see you? Well, why'd you hang up on me, then? I did. Oh, don't start all that again. Can I come in? Look, are you going to ask me and have I got to stand out here on the doorstep? You don't have to ask to come in. This is your home, isn't it? <laughs> Shut my door to you, my dear. And I've never hung my phone up on you, neither. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, so you should be. <laughs> well, all right, if you are sorry. I am. Well, don't just stand here. <laughs> you know, I'm... I was going to meet you off the train, wasn't I? But you never told me the time. No, you're so busy shouting and hanging up the phone on oh, me. Oh, let's forget it. All right, forget it. Yeah, I mean, I could have gone up to that Houston and waited on every train for you, couldn't well, I? Well, it's a good job you didn't, because I come on the coach. <laughs> <laughs> promise myself I'm not talking to you. Oh, well, I wish you'd kept your promise. Eh? Never mind. <laughs> when are you going back? There's <laughs> <laughs> a chance to get my coat off. Where's Mum? Having a sleep. It's all she does nowadays, isn't it? How is she? Oh, hanging on. She might just as well be asleep all the time for all the comfort she is to me when she's awake. I mean, I do my best. I push her around. There's nothing to do. Nowhere to push her to, nowhere to push her back from. I mean, she don't want to do nothing. All she wants to do is sit. Just sit. That's all she can do, isn't it? She could try. <laughs> try what? I don't know, do I? <laughs> Not easy for me, is it? Well, it's not easy for her, either. She's senile, isn't she? <laughs> she's not senile. She's old, that's all. Well, what is old? That is bloody senile, isn't it? You're old. I'm not as old as she is. You're one year younger. Two, two! <laughs> two! I've still got all my marbles. So she? Oh, yeah, you don't have to live with her. Oh, blimey. That's my own fault. I should have married someone younger. Someone a lot younger than myself. Someone who could have lasted me out. Someone who could have looked after me. Oh, shh, that to give over. What are you talking about, give over? She can't hear when she's sitting next to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she was a clever one. <laughs> she didn't marry someone older than herself, did she? No, she had her head screwed on then, all right. I was the muggins. I was the one who rushed in, wasn't I? Without weighing up the pros and the cons. I was the fool, head, stuff with love and remains. <laughs> 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 Bloody rubbish. <laughs> Didn't stop to consider I might have been better off marrying someone younger than myself. Will you get out of my chair? So selfish. Selfish? Me? Oh, yes, yes. Should expect that, I suppose. <laughs> Should expect gratitude. Sacrifice yourself for others. Oh, yes, but don't expect gratitude. No. Sacrifice you? Yes, sacrifice me. What have you ever sacrificed? Look. As he is my witness, I'd want my feet to the bone providing for you. And her. Uh, yes, her, uh, uh, And you, and you too. 45 years, you've been married to Mum and that's how you refer to her still. Uh. Look, who is it looks after her, uh, eh? It's me, me. Her uh, is your wife. And you are her daughter. <laughs> Everybody does what they can. Ain't bloody much, is it? I'm the one who has to look after, tend to her every knee. But I'm the selfish one, oh, yes. Oh, I'm sorry, Dad. Yeah. You do your best, I know that. Yeah. I don't know what she'd do without you. I really don't. I mean, you are a good husband in your way. <laughs> <laughs> in what way? Well, you do your best. Well, that ain't easy. I know it's not. I mean, there's some I know. Some men, they wouldn't do it. No. No, they'd have a put in home, they'd stick her away somewhere. I wouldn't, not me, you know. I think in a world of mummy, you know that. It's just that sometimes, well, you have to be cruel to be kind. What? No, what I mean, it could be more cruel to, like, you know, denying her something better. Somewhere where she, you know, where she'd be better looked after, because, I mean, 
you know, I'm old and, you know, maybe it could be more cruel like keeping her here. I mean, I'd miss her, but... <laughs> You're not thinking of putting her in a home? No, not when I've got breath in my body. I'll push that wheelchair till I drop dead before I let them take Mummy away. It's just that sometimes... No! Over my dead body! I'll make a fresh pot. Is your Michael working yet, Rita? No, but he's had a promise of a job, though. Oh, yeah. Still getting promises of work, is he? Always getting promises of work when he lived down here, wasn't he? There's a lot of unemployment in Liverpool, Dad. I know, that's why I went back up there, wasn't it, eh? <laughs> <laughs> You're not funny. I'm not trying to be funny, my dear. You're the one making the jokes. Promise of a job. He doesn't want to work. He never did. Work is foreign to his nature, isn't it? Hey, he was unemployed when there was full employment, that one. <laughs> well, I mean, he was, he was one of the leaders of your unemployed, he was. One of those helped make it popular, he was. <laughs> he couldn't wait to get back up to Liverpool, could he? And to the security of full unemployment. <laughs> oh, <boy. laughs> Bloody proletarian paradise up there, isn't it, hey? <laughs> Waited on Ain and foot, oh, you're unemployed, and they put them in five star hotels, I hear. And if the room service ain't up to scratch, they move them on somewhere better. Listen, <laughs> I haven't come all the way from Liverpool to hear you go on. Ignore him. Marcus, mum, any better? No, worse. They found out what he is, though. Oh? Senile dementia. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, senile dementia, is she? Yeah. Not surprised. <laughs> Irish, isn't she? <laughs> What's being Irish got to do with it? Senile dementia is failing of the brain, my dear. That's what being Irish has got to do with it. <laughs> what? I mean, anything to do with weakening your brain and your Irish is prone to it, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, your Irish ain't got much of a brain to start with, have they? <laughs> Not in the first place. I mean, your Irish is not known, not noted for their brains, are they? They're more noted for their ignorance than their brains. <laughs> you don't change, I mean, do no, you? it stands oh, to reason. God. If your brain is weak to start with, I mean, if your brain... <laughs> if your brain is a small, delicate, puny little thing, ailing from the moment you was born, <laughs> with hardly a glimmer of life in it, well, I mean, what can you expect? At least a little bit of normal wear and tear and pa boom <laughs> And I pack up on you, innit? Same with all your Celts, innit? What? It's like... It's like an old banger compared to a Rolls Royce, innit? What is? Them and us. You see, your Celt. Your Celt is old, primitive strain, innit, eh? <laughs> He's, old, he's not as highly evolved as what we are. He's an endangered species, almost, <laughs> isn't he? Like a golden eagle. I mean, might even have become extinct if it wasn't for us, the English, protecting them and uh, allowing them rights and things. Do you know what you are? Afternoon, Buana, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that? Marigold. Anyway, she'll be pleased, shouldn't you? Hey, washing up is woman's work, isn't it, Marigold? <laughs> Thank you, Buana. <laughs> You're so chauvinistic. You must be Rita. Yeah. This is my daughter. Mm. Well, you take after your mother, I can see that. I can't see nothing of your father in you, which is fortunate for you. Mind you, only your lovely, gorgeous mother knows the real truth, eh? But if she says it was him, we're just going to have to take her word for it. But how he... <laughs> Shut up! But how he could have anything to do with the creation of something as lovely and as beautiful as you, I'll never know. 
<laughs> you see, I'm a romantic. I prefer to think that he was cock-holded. <laughs> <laughs> Naughty, who was a handsome milkman? <laughs> Still, it's his own fault. I've got no sympathy for him. Beauty should never marry the beast. It's tempting fear. <laughs> Get with your bloody work. Why, yes, boss. I was a-working, I was a-working. <laughs> Darkies all work on Mississippi. Darkies all work while the white man plays. Oh, no. Look! Look, look, no, you look. I've no time for Margaret Thatcher. But if you start going on about her just because she's a woman... Now, fair do with her being a woman. She might be a rotten prime minister. I'm not starting on her because she's a woman. But she's better than any man. Oh, I wouldn't say that, dear. Shut up, you! <laughs> she is the leader of a spiff government. Shuffles her pack faster than any bloody card sharp she does. <laughs> She's always flogging off everything decent we got. Anything that makes money, she sells it to her friends. It's like petticoat laying up there in your houses of parliament some days. <laughs> They're getting back what it costs them to get her in, don't you worry. Oh, blimey. They're all spivs. Not one eating boy in a cabinet because they won't serve under her. And you can't expect it. A decent brought up eating boy. He ain't gonna serve under a grocer's daughter. <laughs> but he jumped up nobody from Grantham. A woman whose father was delivering groceries to their back door. Oh, blimey, they can see through her. They know her sort, don't you worry. Probably lived among spivs all her life. Brought up in a black market during the war, probably. With a father who's a corner shopkeeper. And we all know about corner shopkeepers. Oh, blimey. And all of them bloody crooks, and they? Rob you blind. Well, I mean, look at them during the war. They always had something under the counter, didn't they? If anyone had a few bob over the odds to spend. Oh, it's truth. Half their trade was under the counter in them days. Same as bloody Maggie Thatcher. She's flogging off half the country, is she under the counter? Oh, you wasn't above stealing things out the docks when you was there. Dockers perks, my dear. Dockers perks. <laughs> Anything I brought out of docks was in lieu of wages, was a stealing, was expected of you. A blind eye was turned to it. Mm. But it wasn't honest. Wasn't stealing, was it? But it looked very much like it. And if you'd have got caught, you'd have had to collar felt. Shut up, you. <laughs> Look, all right. I may not be perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I might have my faults. <laughs> <laughs> well, none of us are saints, are we? Well, I'll tell you one thing. I wouldn't have the bloody cheek to set myself up as a Prime Minister and leader of the Tory party coming from her background like she does. God, it's true, she's ruined the Tory party. She has people, her and people like her. I mean, all the decent men have run away from it. They won't even stay in the Tory party. I mean, how do you think? How do you think Her Majesty the Queen feels, eh? Having a mix with her? And invite her home to Buckingham Palace. Somebody with her ways, a bloody grocer's daughter. Yeah, well, I bet she don't drink her tea out of a saucer like you do. Look, mine, move your foot. Go away! <laughs> How come all the dirt seems to gather wherever you sit? He drops crumbs all over the floor. He's worse than a child. The trouble with you is you've not been properly post trained. <laughs> <laughs> Even Harrod has to knock on her back door. That's right. An hour is eight a corner shop, and even they don't get invited up for tea with the Queen. Not fair, is it? What? Well, she should have, have to go down all them stairs. Arrods is on a corner. Bloody big corner, though, isn't it? <laughs> Marks and Spencer. That's right, and they're millionaire sh shopkeepers, yeah. they are. Yeah. yeah. Prince Charles married a Spencer. <laughs> <laughs> She's a Spencer. It's a different sort of Spencer. That's the Earl of Spencer, wasn't it? Diana's father is Earl. And Lord Sainsbury. He sold groceries. <laughs> and Earl Grey, he sold tea. So he yes. might. It was decent tea, wasn't it? Like your brook bonds, that's only fit for monkeys, that is. <laughs> I went past Buckingham Palace the other day and it did look dirty to me. It mm -hmm. is marvellous, mm -hmm. eh? They come out of their mud huts, have only been here a few weeks. <laughs> Hardly out of bloody trees, so and I'm all ready to criticise Her Majesty. I bet our house is the bloody sight cleaner than yours, is Sambo. Dad! Well, it's a man, I mean, 
mean? The, you, you welcome them over here, you show them hospitality, you extend the hand of friendship to them, you give them jobs on your buses and your trains. And let us empty your bedpans and your hospitals and we are all so grateful. Well, show a bit of gratitude then. <laughs> You're not worth the money the council pays. You look at this place like a tip. I know. If only you weren't so scruffy. <laughs> you only got this job because you're ethnic minority. I only got this job because nobody else would do it. Look, you're bloody lucky that we working, you are. If it wasn't for people like her, lame and informed. I'm not lame. Providing you with work, you're lucky. You're in a new industry, aren't you, eh? Health and welfare services. Don't do that to me! <laughs> Health and welfare, innit, eh? A new growth industry. Patients don't get nothing out, but you're doing all right, aren't mm -hmm. you, eh? Yeah, the more illness, the more sickness there is, the more the doctors can't cure, the more customers you get, don't you, eh? The worse off we are, the better off you are. <laughs> All these years, Dan. I couldn't do it. Shut up! Come on, I've lost my thread now, haven't I? I don't know what I was talking about. That's nothing new. <laughs> <laughs> you was talking about how much you admire Margaret Thatcher. The head monitor. <laughs> not admired, not admired. There's nothing to admire about her, is there? That bloody soppy grammar school twit Teddy let her in, wasn't it? I <laughs> like Teddy. You would! <laughs> Get off! No, see. What I was saying, see, before Margaret Thatcher, always before her, your Tory Prime Minister, he came from a good family, didn't he? Someone of your Queen's own class. Someone of your Queen's own circle. Someone she could mix with and feel at ease with. Someone who went to Eton and Arrow. Someone who was brought up to be Prime Minister. Same as she was brought up to be Queen. Someone born to rule. Someone with her own money, someone with her own fortune. Someone with enough money so they don't have to fiddle, they don't have to rob the rest of us. Someone who can afford to be honest. Someone who's born to money and who knows a bit about spending it. Someone like Harold Macmillan. Supermax! Yes, Supermax! <laughs> he'd come out of retirement to try and put her right. He stood up in the House of Lords, didn't he? He tried to tell Thatcher. He said, look, he said, if you ain't got the money, bloody well borrow it, he said. Join a loan club? Yes, in a manner of speaking. I mean, simple economics. I mean, if, if you ain't got it, do what the Americans do. Borrow it. See a tally man? Yes, in a manner of speaking. Look, in 1939, see, when we wanted to have that war with Hitler, I mean... Churchill didn't say, we can't have that war with Hitler because we can't afford it, did he? No. He didn't say, we can't have this war with Hitler not until we've saved up for it, did he? No. <laughs> what he done? What Churchill done? He put it on a slate like what they used to in her father's shop. Yes, in a manner of speaking, he did. <laughs> we had that war with Hitler on the Never Never. I mean, nobody has cash wars nowadays. Nobody can afford that cash <laughs> wars, can they? <laughs> They can't, unless they're cheap six-day wars like your Jews have. <laughs> well, they can have that. I'm laughing. They could have that because that was only fighting Arabs, wasn't they? <laughs> I'll tell you, Sonny, <laughs> by the time they got their discount for cash and flogged the TV rights, I bet they made a small fortune out of that. <laughs> <laughs> Of course they sold the TV rights. They're shrewd, they're very clever businessmen, them Jews. Once they see how much your Muhammad Ali got out of all these TV fights and how much your FA mate that are selling football to your TV, well, it stands to reason, my dear. Never mind bloody laughing. It stands to reason. You've got a nice little war, six days of blood and thunder action with a nice result at the end of it. Well, of course you're going to make sure that you've got your TV rights. I mean, who do you think's got the rights to the Falklands War, eh? You Jews? No, never mind love, not you Jews, us, I hope. And why do you think it was that the Americans saw that war before we did? Because they were shown it first. No, <laughs> they paid more for the first showing, that's why. That's what this country needs, my dear, a few Jews in the government. We've got a few Jews in the government. I'm not talking about schmucks, I'm talking about clever <laughs> Jews. <laughs> not that cartoon, Leon Britton. Oh, <laughs> Looks like Maury the Fishmonger, that one, does it? <laughs> Clever Jews I'm talking about. Jews like your Lord Grey, your Weinstein, your Lord Sir Bernard Delafonte and Charlie Forty. Charlie Forty's not a Jew. Well, he looks like a bloody Jew. Anyway, what's it matter? <laughs> he knows how to make money. Let them have a go at running the country before it's too late. Or better still, better still, let some of your Pakistanis have a go. Get a few Patels into the government. Let them have a go making a few bob for us. I bet they're running Margaret Thatcher's father's corner shop a bloody sight better than he did. Or, or your Japanese, yeah, 
Let's hire a Japanese government to run things for us, just till we get on our feet. <laughs> <laughs> All that. All what? All of that. Tablecloth? No, all flowers, candle, everything. I What's all that for? Oh, I think they look nice, make the table look more attractive. Look a bloody sight more attractive if had a decent meal on it, wouldn't it? <laughs> well, it will have. I'm going home tomorrow, so Winston's throwing a farewell dinner for me, isn't it? Sweet. He's not cooking one of their bloody curries again, is he? <laughs> Soul food is here now with a friend. He's living lover. Like this. Are <laughs> oh, the policemen wind up with our. No, but I'm going out the pub. No, go on. You can't go up the pub. I bought you a present. There you are. <laughs> Lord Kitchener. Your country needs you. Mm. <laughs> well, your country don't need you, you bloody lie about puffed up. So, Butch, I love older men. Mm -hmm. I'm going out of pub. No, brother. Look. Coon juice. <laughs> Black Jamaican rum. Fire water for the natives. All for you. Now, what can be better than that, eh? Two bottles? Oh. Wicked men. <laughs> Hello, Hello, darling, you all right? Yeah. Hello, darling. How's it been? Uh, Never mind. Bring something else for you, too, don't worry. Hey, thought you was going up the pub. Yeah, well, me. Rita's farewell party, innit, eh? I mean. <laughs> God, blimey. Whoa! <laughs> Jungle juice, all right, ain't it, eh? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, don't I walk out on her farewell party? I mean, that'd be. that'd be, uh, Churlish, wouldn't it, eh? Hey? Got the pub, middle of a farewell party. No, no. Christ. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> Don't want to upset her, eh? Hey? My little girl. <laughs> I won't be upset. Mm. No, it's all right. I don't mind staying. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Hey, I, 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 didn't, I didn't know I didn't know he was going to have a party. Hey, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think she fancies me in this. Sanders of the river. Yes. Hi, you cool. Hi, you cool. Hi, you cool. Hi, you cool. Yeah. And I, you Coco, to you and all, darling. <laughs> Girls, I give you a toast. The great British Raj. <laughs> <laughs> 